What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video we are jumping into the dawn of DC. DC Comics year long initiative bringing us brand new titles, bringing us new characters and giving some new stories to some old characters. This is Green Arrow issue number one. This is written by Joshua Williamson and for those that have been keeping up we haven't seen Oliver Queen since Dark Crisis. When all of our heroes returned, Green Arrow seemed to be the only one that was lost in time, somewhere lost in the multiverse. But with Green Arrow's disappearance, we had the return of Connor Hawk. We also had the return of Roy Harper. And so with Connor, Roy, and Black Canary all working together, they are trying to figure out what the heck happened to Oliver Queen. So make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we have Oliver who is waking up shoreside. The waves crashing over him, they wake him up. He wakes up only to find himself in some random location. Not sure what happened, but this seems to be him transporting from one place to another. Not sure exactly what happened to him. This is hardly the first time that he has ever been stranded far from home. As he looks around at this very alien world, we take a little step back. Green Arrow begins to really dive into his history. At one point in time, he was just a very rude, rich man. And then he ended up on that island, trained with some bad people, worked with some great individuals, eventually becoming a Justice League member. But the universe wanted more from him. And that is when Dark Crisis happened. Now Oliver Queen, not knowing where he is and lost in the multiverse. We pick up in Gotham City. We have Roy Harper, we have Black Canary, and we have Connor Hawk. Now Oliver Queen never saw himself as a family man. Never saw himself settling down or having children. But the universe definitely had some different ideas for him. As our three heroes chase down this armored vehicle, Connor can't help but think maybe his father really is dead. But what Mr. Terrific had told them is that Canary and the rest of the Justice League, they were able to follow Hal's light back to Earth. It broke the chains that kept them in Pariah's realm. But something grabbed Oliver mid-flight without leaving a single trace. And when they lost one green arrow, they find Connor. They believe that this can't be a coincidence, but they find themselves in Gotham because of Red Hood. He said that this van had fingerprints on it that matched. The fact that they slammed the pedal as soon as they saw them, this is only telling that they have something to hide. As we see the back open up, we see the goons with machine guns ready to unload. But as we make our introductions, we have Roy Harper, aka Speedy, aka Arsenal, aka Red Arrow. Greatest marksman in the world, trained by none other than Green Arrow. And then there is Connor Hawk, aka Green Arrow, aka the son of Oliver Queen. Oliver still beats himself up for the fact that he wasn't there to watch him grow up. It makes him feel like a scumbag every single day, but he is repeatedly proven worthy of the name Green Arrow. And then of course, we have Black Canary, aka Dinah Lance, aka Oliver Queen's Pretty Bird. She being the very best of the Green Arrow family. She keeps Oliver honest, makes sure he's less of an a-hole. When he had left that island, he was so angry at the world and everything. He believed that he had left his heart there, but Black Canary had found it. Bit by bit, Oliver built his family up, but a long time ago, something was missing. As our heroes are tracking down these goons, this is where we see the Cheshire Cat. We have only seen her a handful of times inside the pages of Batman and Detective Comics. She is part of what is called The Sigil, a superhero group that has made their appearance here in Gotham. She helps them quickly put down these goons. As they go to thank her for all of her help, 
Roy Harper cannot help but recognize who this is. He tells her that you threw your first ninja star when you were two years old. Roy was so angry at her mother for teaching her, but the truth is he couldn't have been prouder. She used to love Halloween, but never had a sweet tooth. She just enjoyed any excuse to dress up in costume. He used to let her stay up way past her bedtime and watch old action movies. He lost count how many times they had watched Point Break. Roy's daughter was only five years old when she was taken. That was the worst day of his life. But he knows his daughter. He has been looking for her ever since. Getting down to his knees, he lets her know that it's okay if you're not ready. He doesn't care what happened. He doesn't care how she is here. And that she doesn't have to come with them if she doesn't want to. But he is letting it be known that he is here for her. That whenever she is ready, she can come home. This is when she rushes over to him and she hugs her father. Roy Harper's daughter has returned. Everybody giving hugs. Everybody so happy to see that she is here. Nobody understanding exactly what is going on. Roy does ask, why didn't you come to me sooner? But he tells her to take your time. You don't have to answer any of the questions that you don't want to right now. But she says that they will never let us be a family together. Not sure what she is talking about. This is where we see both Connor and Cheshire Cat. They start to disappear. Before Roy's daughter disappears, she says a couple of words. She says, find Amanda Waller. As quickly as they are reunited, this is as quickly as both Connor and Roy Harper's daughter disappear. After just getting his daughter back, she is gone. The only clue he has is Amanda Waller. And so now, in anger, he asks where the F is Amanda Waller. This is where we see Cheshire Cat arriving in what looks to be the same place the Green Arrow had landed. But she faces against what is called a Manhunter. As this robot begins to attack her, we see an arrow with a freaking chainsaw on it go right through its head. And we have the arrival of Green Arrow. Green Arrow grabbing her and saying that we gotta get going. That more are coming and they are not gonna stop. But Green Arrow knows exactly who she is, and he knew that she was coming. He knew because of this giant device that stands before them. Now, Oliver calls it a cosmic omniporter multiversal network system, something that he just made up. But really, this is just a giant teleporter. There are a few of these models scattered across time and space. This is what brought Green Arrow here. This is what brought Roy Harper's daughter here. Asking if he knows how to use it, we see Green Arrow take an arrow, and he destroys it. Angry, asking Oliver why the heck he just did that, because that could have been their ticket home. She wants to know the truth about why this keeps happening to them. And Oliver says that there is only one truth, that they can never go home. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, jumping into this, I wasn't sure how this comic was going to be, but I absolutely love it. You guys know I'm a big fan of Joshua Williamson. His run on The Flash really did sell me as a good writer, at least in my opinion. Prior to that, I really wasn't familiar with that much of his work. But ever since then, he's done a pretty good job. Now, we could argue over Dark Crisis and his role in all of that. But when it comes to making standalone stories of heroes, he really does do a pretty good job. And this issue number one of Green Arrow, that is 100% true with this. We are seeing the Green Arrow family, from Connor Hawk to Roy Harper. They are all making their appearance, and they are all hunting for Green Arrow. They are trying to find him. They know that he's not dead, they know that he is somewhere out there. 
and there obviously is something much bigger at play that we don't understand yet. But I am very excited to see how all of this unfolds. Very curious on where Connor Hawk finds himself teleported to. And while we all thought that Amanda Waller was going to seal her off, seal herself off on Earth 3, she created her Justice League, she blocked it off from the rest of the multiverse. For a minute there, we thought Amanda Waller was finally gone. But now we are seeing that Amanda Waller is starting to rise up again. Not sure why or for what purpose, but she is making a return. And standing behind her, she has a whole army of superheroes. Of supervillains and everything in between. Not really sure what she's up to, but it is never good when it comes to Amanda Waller. One thing is for certain, Roy Harper is lividly pissed off. Finding his daughter after all of these years, only to have her taken away in mere seconds, and knowing that Amanda Waller is responsible, Roy Harper is about to be on the warpath. But let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories, if you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with Dawn of DC. Be sure to check out the links in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with this year-long event. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to getting comics every single month. Not only does this help out the channel tremendously, but you are also getting tons of perks in the process. If you are unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.